Hello, everyone. This is Shasta. <laughs> um, so yeah, we have a, a new truck camper. No, you gotta get down, down. Um, and that's going to be the next project. Um, right now, the big camper is covered in a tarp because of the rain. And I am just not sure. I think I'm gonna need to restart the camper project, the big camper project in the new year. I know, you gotta go lie down though. Careful, good girl. No, nope. Shasta wants me to throw her ball. Um, I lost my train of thought. So I don't think I explained it in uh, the video where we picked this up. Um, Shasta shush please, mama's talking. It's a 1970, or within the 1970s, camper shell. As you can see, it has some cabinets in it. It had a light at one point, it has a vent. It's a pretty basic setup, but it's much nicer than what I was thinking I was gonna end up with, because um, I had kind of a budget. I wasn't wanting to s spend like $1,000 on a brand new fiberglass um, shell, so. I was searching and searching, um, and then one day I just happened to check Craigslist, and I found this camper shell that had been on the list on um, Craigslist on the list <laughs> on Craigslist for um, I think it was two months. And sorry, I'm just watching Shasta, making sure she doesn't eat anything she's not supposed to. Um, and yeah, so this popped up. There was one other one that was in the same price range, um, but it's funny that after, like, the day after I got this, I'm obviously still getting recommendations from Facebook about certain vintage camper shells. And one, someone is asking, I think, $400, which is double what this is. And the center ceiling is falling down on that one. And then I found another one that someone was asking $600 for, and I don't even think they had it. I don't remember seeing an interior photo. Nope, sit down. Um, but like the exterior just looked awful. Like looked like all the ru the screws were rusting and like had like drips from rain. Um, so like rusty drip drips on it. So the fact that this one was only $200 was just insane. So obviously I jumped on it, um, but I'm gonna show you the worst of the camper right now. Okay, so this is the door that goes right here. So it's awesome, it's huge. The tailgate has to come off for this to go on. Um, but yeah, the door needs work. I'm thinking that the end result will probably be like a fully custom wood door. Maybe do like a chev- I was gonna do a chevron pattern, but now that I'm looking at it, there's really <laughs> no big area that you could see the chevron pattern other than like down here and a little bit up- not even really up there, you would not be able to tell. Um, so we'll see. But a lot of the wood on the base definitely needs to be replaced and this is what goes through my floor um it's gonna get bolts through them so yeah you can see just how bad some of these things are um and also I'm going to be replacing the weather stripping um it's looks like it's newer down here but it looks like the person probably the guy I bought it from hi Shasta Shasta <laughs> the guy I bought it from didn't take the plastic of this off. So I feel like that makes it a little bit less effective. Um, I kind of, I know aluminum when it gets bent, starts to stretch when you try to fix it. So we'll see what I can do with this. But all of this um, gasket is just old and dry and cracking. So that's all gonna get replaced. This is obviously falling apart. And this is something that attaches to the camper or sorry, the bed of the truck. So this just needs some general work. There's also some not great stickers on here that will be coming off. <laughs> um, I live in an area where there's a lot of conservative kind of racist people. So <laughs> um, while I got a budget or got this camper within the budget that I was hoping for, 
that means it came with some questionable stickers. So a heat gun is coming on Tuesday and I'll be taking those off. Oh my goodness. You're so cute. <laughs> Um, we went for a walk earlier, so she's nice and tired, not bugging me too, too much for the ball, but yeah, so this is going to be a really fun, easy project. Um, I'm actually going to quickly talk about what is going on in here. Okay. So my plan for this truck camper shell is to be pretty, like the word that's coming to mind is like plug and play, which is more like electrical like it's more used for electrical but which will be definitely a factor in this but I obviously want to be able to use this as a truck when I need to so I'm gonna have to build things that can be pulled out preferably on my own um I don't want to want to have to ask my mom or brother to come out and help me um, move things so um when the camper, the big camper, is ready to start getting the wood panelings in and stuff like that, I need to be able to haul four by eight sheets of plywood. And luckily, the door actually by on diagonal measures like four feet and like four inches, I think. So I should be able to get a, a four by eight sheet of plywood through the door without having to take the whole back of the shell off. But if I need to take the whole back of the shell off, I can and put the tailgate back on it. Um, yeah, so it, it will be pretty basic. It's going to be used when I'm camping in it, pretty much just for weekend trips. I'm hoping to make it to descend on La Sierra in May. Um, and so I have plenty of time for that. And I'm actually gonna do a very basic build for the holidays so I can go visit my dad So um, and bring Shasta with me. That's the big thing is I wanna be able to have a place that she is comfortable and secure and I don't have to worry about her um, because my stepmom and also her mom are very little women. <laughs> and Shasta is large and still pretty active and excitable. So while occasionally it's actually really sweet um, and what I'm looking forward to is around um, Christmas, they give her gifts and I bring her in the house on her leash and she gets to lay down and eat her treats while we're all opening presents presence so I want to be able to bring her for that and without the shell there's no place for her to stay or for me to stay with her so that's the plan so for that it's really probably just going to be quickly redoing some curtains and if I can get a coat of paint in here awesome but otherwise we're just throwing a air mattress in the back um, and keeping this pretty open so all right and now I have some questions for you guys I kind of feel like I have a very interesting set of subscribers that are like helpful uncles. <laughs> um, I think my subscriber like ratio of men to women is like 60-40 men to women and based on like who comments on my videos it tends to be older men so hello welcome my internet uncles. Um, I need your advice um, from people who maybe no products or systems and ways to fix things that I, as a young person, haven't discovered yet. So um, what I'm thinking, it's honestly in really good condition. Um, it's just old. It seems like it's been resealed a few times. So there's really only one spot like in there that it looks like had a little bit of water damage at one point. But being from the 70s, it the paneling is just old and like, you know that like dry old feeling it's not like it's falling apart like the door is where it's like rotting it's just dry and old because it's just been baking in the sun <laughs> oh leaf fell um so i would love to do cedar on the roof this is my first question does it matter to just put the cedar uh shiplap just directly on it and use the existing panel as kind of the anchor points. Um, I'm not going to be wiring. I'm going to get USB rechargeable puck lights that stick on by magnets so I don't need to run any wires under there and that is not a fan that's just a vent. So for just ease of renovation I thought it would be really easy just to put the ship flap over that but if there's a reason why I shouldn't let me know. Put that in the comments. Okay next question. Like I said, the walls are just really dry um, and I thought I would only do cedar on the roof. So all of the walls, 
I don't love this coloring. I don't love that look, um, especially just because it's not new anymore. I'm sure when it was new, it probably looked great, but um, it being 50 years old, <laughs> I think it needs an upgrade. So there's something interesting about these walls that in, it's not like wallpaper. Um, these are actual like divots, like in, I don't know if you can see, sorry, there we go, the lighting changed. So these are like real like ruts in it and the wood itself is really, like you hear that, that's super rough. So my question, I don't think paint is going to look great on top of that. I think it's going to show a lot of texture and I don't know if that's the look I'm going for. Um, that being said, I guess I could try it, but is there a product or a method where I could like put a coating on over it to smooth it out? That's something I'm thinking of um, and maybe to at least get rid of some of those like creases. I'd imagine when I drive on it, it might break depending on what I use. Cause what I was thinking was like, um, I was thinking like wood filler, but I feel like that'd get expensive after a while using all that wood filler to like smooth out all those cracks. The other thing I was thinking is like drywall compound. Um, I've seen people use that. And I don't know if that would work for this. So again, let a girl know. Okay, final question. I've, when I look at truck camper videos, I see a big range of, not a big range, there's really just two options of what you can do for the floor. Um, I spilled some oil on the floor, so that's uh, baking soda. But should I put a subfloor in this? I feel like when I'm living in it, it would be nice to have a flat floor and it would probably be easier to put things in and out. Like when I'm dealing with the bed platform that I'll take in and out, I feel like it'd be easier to anchor to a subfloor. But I don't, so I say this with a grain of salt because I have an F250. I don't really have to worry about weight in this, but I do think it would be added weight. It would be an extra thing I have to take out when I have to take this thing apart. Um, and so I think the pros and cons for both of them come about 50-50. I don't know which I should do because I think no matter what, I was planning on putting a little like two by three rug because no matter what, the bed is going to be all the way in the back and there's going to be like two feet of extra space in the front area, which will be really nice if I have to cook inside. So there will be some exposed floor. So it's a mix of like anchoring the bed platform and any storage boxes. Do I anchor that to a subfloor or let it kind of, not necessarily free float, but it would have other ways to just stay secure and not move when I'm driving. But there's that added inconvenience when I have to take it out. But that at the same time, how often will I be taking it out? I guess I could just take the bed platform out and leave the subfloor in. So those are my questions. That's all I can think of right now. But yeah, the next few videos are going to be this. Um, the blue is going, it's not going to stay blue. Shasta isn't becoming impatient. So I think that's going to be the end of this video. All right, thank you so much for watching and make sure you're following to see what oh, this big thing ends up looking like. Just come here. No, I need you to stay. Okay, start this over. Thank you so much for watching and you can expect more videos. Oh, good girl. More videos on our little road home. Um, make sure you're subscribed. Please answer my questions in the comments if you can help me out. And I'll see you next time. Shasta and I <laughs> will see you next time. <laughs>